the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sanctifier. Amen. Amen. Please take a seat. So when I was in my early 20s, just a very short few years ago, and I was still trying to figure out uh, what I was going to do with my life, what kind of occupation I might have, my cousin Gail gave me some very shrewd advice. And this advice has always stayed with me. She said, Stephen, I want you to think about what you want to wear to work each day. What would make you feel good about yourself so that if you ever had to wear it um, and you had to wear it each day, you wouldn't mind? So honestly, I had never thought of that. I just assumed what I wore to work wasn't very important. Um, now, before you think uh, I became a priest so I could wear all black most days, um, that's just 90% of it. I'm kidding. Um, so my cousin uh, went on to say something else that was quite important. She said something um, as simple as what we wear impacts more than we think. It affects how we are perceived and how we perceive others. So for example, I don't want to see my medical doctor while she's wearing shorts and a Hawaiian t-shirt. And conversely, I don't want to see my waiter wearing a stethoscope around his neck. The old adage, which most of us have heard, dress for success, it actually has some wisdom in it. Most of us dress up for an interview, or first date, maybe for our first day of school, maybe for a baptism. So why would it be any different in our spiritual lives? So as we read the final chapter of the letter to the Ephesians this morning, I noticed something that I hadn't really given any thought to, that our spiritual clothing is apparently of vital importance. So apparently, spiritually, we really are what we wear. So here's some of the passage again um, from Ephesians. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. So, to quickly recap, here's the short list of items we apparently all need to be wearing. So there's an armor, belt, breastplate, shoes, shield, helmet, and sword. Now you can't see it, of course, um, but I'm actually wearing all of these items under my robes except for the helmet, which would be strange, of course. It took a long time to get this hair. So just as you might be wearing a tie, right, to signify that you are serious about work, or have a medical uniform that means you're on a staff at the hospital, or wearing a black shirt and a white band around your collar means you are available for prayer, the writer of this letter suggests spiritual clothing that we all need to wear. So, uh, and I waited for this day for a long time, uh, I now feel like I have divine permission to tell you all what you should be wearing, spiritually speaking. So, first, you need armor, which means you need boundaries around yourself. Why? So you don't just absorb the values of the larger culture, values like you are what you make, or your worth is dependent on your looks, or who you love and how you identify your gender is somehow incorrect. Second, you need truth as a spiritual belt around your waist. Because the temptation is not that you might just lie out of convenience, but more likely you might just stay silent when God needs you to speak up. Third, and granted, this is a rather unusual piece of clothing for 2021, you will need a breastplate or a sense of justice that we don't just accept the unacceptable and tolerate the intolerable. We also need good shoes. 
That is enthusiasm to spread the good news, to place ourselves in the position to listen carefully to another story, not just out of respect, which is super important, but so you might share where Jesus is already active in their lives, and God willing, they might just do the same for you. And of course you need a shield. I mean, apparently everyone needs a shield. This is a shield as a force of faith in front of you that has your back that when the corrupt powers of this world, the powers and principalities, as Paul tells us, when those things try to tear you down and question your dignity, your faith reminds you that you're forgiven, that you are cherished, and that you are beloved. And though a helmet is certainly bad for your hair, it's still super necessary. You need a helmet of salvation that you have a clear mind, knowing that you could not do for yourself what you think you can, which is save yourself, that this has already been done for you by Jesus. And finally, a sword, which may seem the strangest of items to wear, but what the writer of Ephesians is getting at is this, to carry the sword of the Spirit is to have the Word of God in you, in your heart, in your mind, in your body, This is not so you can impress people with your biblical literacy, but so you can know the story of who you really are and that that story is always connected to Jesus. Which, which is why in many ways this is the perfect reading for a baptism. Because we are preparing to give Leo new spiritual clothing that will help him to be the person Jesus wants him to be. In which case, each day you need to help him think of his baptism. Think of what new clothes he was given on this very day to wear. The armor or the boundaries our values as followers of Jesus will give him. The belt or the truth we will help him commit to saying. The breastplate or the justice we commend to him to pursue. The shoes are how God will place him in contact with those in need of news that is good and that he will learn to share with them. The shield or the faith that we can help nurture and that will help keep his integrity solid. And the sword, that story of who he really is in Jesus and not the false story of who the world will tell him he must be. And since you all have been wearing these clothes for a bit longer, you all need to help him and help each other to see ourselves as God sees us. Why? So that when others see you, they might just get a glimpse of how God sees them too, as forgiven, cherished, and beloved. So, the final thing I have to tell you is now that you know all this, Uh, I hope it's obvious, but please, please dress accordingly. Amen.